Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this series, we are once again revisiting the, uh, the, the challenge of sorts, where we are transferring from the ISS over to this very cool uh, Station 5. In the last video, we did our first pass through the atmosphere, and I can't actually remember off the top of my head how many degrees of alignment we got, but I think it was around 7 or something like that. So we, I paused the, the simulation at the end of the last video because I wanted, I want to see how much fuel we used to complete that, that first pass. And we're coming up pretty quickly to the point where we're going to need to make sure that we're in position for our second pass. So I had to pause the simulation and now we're going to uh, pick up where we left off in the last part. So let me go ahead and switch views here. That thing just looks cool, doesn't it? <laughs> and let me uh, unpause and come back inside the XR2. I'm going to go down to, uh, uh, not 10, hit the wrong button there, 0 0.01 because I want to uh, do a bit of housekeeping here and I want to make sure I have time to do it before I get over to the node. So let's bring up burn time calculator and so we have DV plus RCS. So this is how much fuel we have remaining, 8,698. 8,698. So after the first pass, we have 8,698 remaining. So in terms of, um, and this was this is how much fuel I'm estimating that we'll use, and I have no estimates for this maneuver. In this column is how much fuel we are actually using. So I'm gonna say equals C59, we've already used C60, and now we have now we have 8,698 remaining. Okay. So the first pass cost us 329 delta V. And let's see how much plane alignment we got out of that. We are, we're at 56.05, 56.05. So that's something else I should keep track of. So that's how much DV we have remaining. And after first pass, uh, rink equals 56.05 so we started out at 66.31 so mm, 66 let me, let me not try to guess let me just say uh just out of curiosity 66.31 minus 56.05 so that's a 10.26 degree improvement that doesn't seem right to me so, oh, 66.31, okay. So let's say a 10.26 uh, gain, like that. Okay, so now we have kind of logged our information. So let's go ahead and continue on. So let me switch camera views over here. So that's how much fuel we have remaining. And okay, we're coming up onto the node. Let me look at orbit really quick. So we're 252 seconds away from apoapsis, 263 seconds away from the node. All right, let me go back to real time. What I was doing at the end of the last video, I rotated outward so that I could basically move my apoapsis forward because I want my apoapsis to occur at the same time that I reach the node. And we just and we're about we're just a few seconds off. It's really close, but I'm just going to put in a bit more main engine just to bring those numbers closer together. And they're, now they're almost perfect. And we are going to, we really don't even need to make a change to our periapsis, not really. Um, and we don't need to mess, I would say we probably don't need to mess with um, interplanetary MFD, but just out of curiosity. Let me bring that up. And we're saying that we're going to want to do this maneuver in just a few seconds here. So let's go 10. And now down to one and we're wanting to do that maneuver right here which is 202 seconds so yeah I'm not going to worry about I'm not going to worry about using this MFD we're just going to do it the old-fashioned way so let's get into the prograde position just a couple taps of rotation there and time warp to get us over there faster Okay, so now we're facing prograde. I want to bring up my PEA just a tiny, tiny bit, just three kilometers. So um, 
uh, and every everything that we're doing from the point that we logged our delta v delta v usage until the time that we log it again i'll consider all this as as cost of our pass two pass number two so i'm going to go ahead and warp time forward now we'll get really close to the apoapsis and then i'm just going to use linear translation to bring up the pea by you know two and a half kilometers And we'll go ahead and press prograde because we're already there. Translation. All right, and we're there at the node, so, or yeah, there at Apoapsis rather. Okay, so we have uh, 75 kilometers, and that should be, we should be at 75 kilometers when we are over at the ascending node. And ideally, uh, now last time, we were coming down from 360 kilometers. This time we're only coming down from 280 kilometers, so there's a we'll we'll probably be encountering the atmosphere sooner than we did last time. Now that could be good um, as long as it's not too soon. So that's one thing that we want to keep an eye on, and that's why I want my apoapsis to be, you know, 250 or 275. I don't want it to be 120 or 150 because then I'll come around and I'll be hitting the atmosphere like at this point, and that's no good. So hopefully. My apoapsis was high enough that we won't be hitting the atmosphere too soon. Okay, so we know again that we've already got our elevator and our center of gravity all sorted, and we know that we're going to be uh, at the ascending node. An equals an, a, uh, anti node equals uh, ascending node equals anti normal. So I'm going to rotate my vessel over. Rotation. A couple taps, a little bit of time warp, and I want to be in this orientation. Kill rotate, and we'll go ahead and just place our vessel right there on the prograde position. And now I'm going to go back to this uh, this view, and we're going to warp time forward. Go ahead and bring back up surface MFD for now, and we'll be more careful with our time warps than we were last time. That really spooked me. I thought I ruined my flight. Okay, so we're coming down to around here. So let me go back to real time for a moment because I'm now yawed so far out of position. Okay, so we're at 150 kilometers and we're at that point. That seems reasonable to me. Go ahead and warp time forward a bit farther. So now we're at entry interface altitude. Let me go back to real time and let me yaw the vessel back over. So we're at 110 kilometers and we're here. This this feels reasonable to me. So let's warp time forward a bit farther. Plus. So now we're starting to get that dynamic pressure. It's starting to have some effect on the vessel, but not a huge effect at this point. So raising the apoapsis up to 280, that seems reasonable. And I think we'll probably stick, or we'll stick with that number close to it. So we're at negative uh, 76 on our vertical speed, 96 kilometers. And let me just go ahead and do control F2, just to have finer control over time warp. And you can see we're starting to get some rate, not much, but we are starting to get a bit. And we should be encountering the atmosphere a little bit sooner than last time because, again, we, we're coming down from 280 kilometers instead of 360. So last time we probably hit, you know, the point that we're at now, we were probably like here or something. Okay, let's go ahead and warp time forward. We still have a few more kilometers to get down before we're going to have much action. Go ahead and come out and we kill rotate. So we're, we're pretty well at that 15 degree point and that's where we want to be. We're at 86 kilometers. We're coming down at 50, 60 meters a second. That's good. And let's go ahead and warp time forward using a finer control in fact I think we might even be able to do um, closer to 250 kilometers next time because I feel like if we I feel like if we were at 75 kilometers now I don't know that's a that's a pretty good angle actually but maybe we'll go 275 kilometers next time on the APA
Okay, so let's go ahead and why does it jump ahead like that? Click here, drag it forward, getting close to our target altitude. You can see our weight's really picking up now. Again, 15 degrees, that's the perfect angle of attack, and we proved that in the last video. Okay, so we're we're at about 77 and a half kilometers. I'm gonna go ahead and start rotating just slightly out to bring down the vertical speed. Because I want it to be closer to zero by the time I'm actually at 75 kilometers. Rates at negative 0.017. I think the best we saw last time was 0 0.026, something like that. So we have an idea of what to expect. Uh, last passed cost us 329 delta V, so we can expect to be somewhere in that vicinity, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. All right, so I don't have to worry about my angle of attack anymore. I feel like I have the vessel just perfectly dialed in. There is one more thing we can look at in here. Uh, this gives us more decimal points, so technically we're slightly suboptimal. But the, the one one issue you have if you if you mess with it when you're just a little bit above 15 or a little bit below 15, you might spend a lot more time, you know floating back and forth between 16 and 14 so I'm not gonna mess with it but again ideally would be 15.0 so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go ahead and get out start rotating out a bit more I'm gonna go ahead and get out of this MFD because I want to keep an eye on my my orbit and when we get around uh, you know when we get a little bit closer here to the ascending node I'll go ahead and start putting in a little bit of main engine and when we do the main engine, you'll notice we'll get a little bit of an improvement on our rate. Okay, so vertical speed is almost zero. And I'm pretty close to my target altitude, so I don't want my vertical speed to climb, you know, to 30, 40 plus. I just want to be, you know, close to zero, you know, probably 10 one way or the other. So we're at, uh, two, we're getting 0 0.026 improvement and we're at 74 kilometers um, one other thing I want to show that I think is neat if I bring up my generic cameras I, I set up some new cameras like this is looking off the right wing of the vessel so like right that camera is basically positioned oh boy struggling with this there we go so I have a camera placed essentially like right here somewhere and it's looking that way and that's that camera and I have a camera on the back of the vessel let me just look at everything really quick so this is looking straight back so I have a camera put right approximately right here and it's looking straight back and I have a camera approximately right uh, right here and it's looking straight up and then I have a camera. Let me check everything really quick. Just going to rotate out a little bit. And this camera that you're looking at here is positioned right, uh, right here, and it's looking that way. And then I have this camera, which is looking forward, and that's right about right here somewhere right here and it's looking straight forward that's that camera and then we have one that's looking down just um, straight down so yeah I like these camera views I think they're pretty neat that's a good one unfortunately we can't really look at them too much because I need this information uh, really close to the node check everything out okay so our got a bit distracted there and we're going negative all right and yep we are going to need some couple ticks of main engine now to bring up our bring up the other side of our orbit so we're just a few seconds away from the node we're getting improvement by 0 0.027 and I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a little bit more main engine for the moment because I got looking at those camera views there and was losing track of my still want to be close to zero on my 
horizontal speed though, a vertical speed rather. Not quite ready to start climbing back out, not too much anyway. All right. Okay, we're past the node, so we want to make sure we keep our vertical speed positive. Go ahead and kill the main engine. And now just put in two ticks of the main engine. All right, so we have improved our relative inclination by almost 20 degrees at this point. And let's see, where are we at in the video? 15 minutes, so a couple more minutes. So we're past the node. We are at 75 kilometers. We're climbing out at 14 meters per second, and that's getting more and more positive as we go. We have the main engine going to keep our orbit from decaying too much. And again, the goal is to place our, periap our apoapsis right here. And I saw in the last video the best way to do that, or one of the best ways, or a, and I shouldn't say best, but a way to do it to make sure that I can uh, get it exactly where I want. If need be, um, you know, I can just compare it with the TN value. All right, so apoapsis is 128 and going up. I'm take a sip of water. So we've improved our relative inclination by over 20 degrees at this point, just over. So it looks like we're getting around uh, 10 plus degrees on each pass. So in theory, it'll take you know, six passes or something like that. But I think maybe as we do each pass, we, I think we might be able to improve things a little bit. So hopefully we can get away with, uh, you know, three, four passes. I don't think we can do three because I don't think we're going to get 40 degrees on the next pass, but maybe, maybe four. So that's, that's the one thing about these types of uh, you know these types of flights is you know if you're not a patient person if you just want everything to be done at you know 10 100 a thousand time warp this is not for you <laughs> don't do this method it requires patience Mach 27 plus. and one little mistap on your time warps and you're gonna ruin the entire thing so be patient So we're about 250 on our APA. I'll probably go ahead and shut that off around 250, turn off the main engines, about right here. And yeah, I'm expecting to get a bit of uh, drag. So we might kick it back on here in a moment. But for now, I just kind of want to see. So we're at 80 kilometers, climbing out. Let's go ahead and kick that main engine back on. But now I'm just going to do one tick just to keep it going up slowly. Probably by the time we're 85 kilometers, getting close to 90, then we probably won't be having much effect on our APA. And I did, and you do, in it, our APA will actually increase once we turn more over to wings level. But we are at uh, about 43 and a half degrees on our relative inclination, so that's an improvement of about 23 degrees so far. Rate is getting closer and closer to zero as we pass the node and as we climb out. APA is at 260. Let's go ahead and kill our engine. You can see it's not uh, coming down as fast because we're higher up now. So go ahead and continue on at this attitude for just a little bit longer because we are still getting some tiny benefit out of the atmosphere. Go ahead and do a control F2 though and we'll do like a three time warp. Mm, go back to real time for a minute. Just a little bit more on the main engine because I want to, I feel like that last pass was pretty good so I don't want to deviate from it too much. And we were, we were at about 260 kilometers or something the last time we were at this point and then we, as we went wings level, um, it increased a bit. So right about there, oops, that's not what I want. Okay. All right, a little bit on the time warp. 
So yeah, the APA is not really having too much of an impact anymore. We're high up enough where you don't have to worry about that. So and now we're pretty much zeroed out. So just like last time, oh, let me actually go back to real time. Let me go ahead and pause here. Switch camera views. And so when we come back, we will uh, take a look at how much uh, total fuel we burned for this pass. And we will get set up for the next pass. So hopefully you enjoy this and I will see you in the next part.